When most people talk about the best NBA draft classes of all time, three years get mentioned the most. Michael Jordan's 1984 draft, Kobe's class of 1996, and LeBron's draft in 2003. But then there's the 2018 draft class, which in some aspects might be even better. The 2018 draft is, without a doubt, the best class ever at the point guard position. There are several future Hall of Famers, and it may even be the deepest class of all time. But what better place to start than the best European prospect ever? Of course, we're talking about Luka Doncic. Luka wasn't just the most accomplished teenager coming out of Europe, he was the most accomplished teenager to ever enter the NBA, period. Of course, there were other greats such as Drazen Petrovic, Tony Kukoc, Arvedis Sabonis, or Manu Ginobili who came to the NBA with a EuroLeague title and MVPs, but nobody did it by the age of 19. Luka was the youngest MVP in EuroLeague history, and the youngest MVP of the Spanish League, leading Real Madrid to titles in both competitions as the clear leader on the best team in Europe. However, some NBA general managers didn't see that. They saw a slow-footed, non-athletic Euro, fearing that he might become the next Andrea Bargnani or Dragan Bender. The Suns, who had the first overall pick, already had Devin Booker and Eric Bledsoe as their starting backcourt, and they were in search of a big man. They found that in DeAndre Ayton, a 7'1 center who could dribble like a guard, had a soft touch, and was built like a Greek god. Many times, NBA teams will draft for fit, and not necessarily take the best player available. However, the Suns believed they got both and that Ayton would become the next great NBA big man. But then, with the number two overall pick, the Sacramento Kings had their pick, and everybody believed that their GM, Vlade Divac, would select Luka. After all, Divac was one of the most talented European centers ever, somebody who knew firsthand that you could dominate without being the most athletic player on the court. Divac knew Luka for years. He was friends with Luka's father, Sasha, a fellow Serbian, and it seemed like a no-brainer that Doncic would become a king. However, the Kings also had point guard De'Aaron Fox, whom they drafted in 2017 but also Buddy Heald and Boyan Bogdanovich as shooting guards. So adding Doncic to that mix would create a jam in the backcourt, and the Kings needed a big man. So Divac drafted Marvin Bagley, another athletic marvel who could jump out of the gym and fit in the modern mold of centers who could run the floor and do a bit of everything. In college, Bagley was very composed around the basket. He made decisions quickly, with a solid feel for the game and nice handles that made him a great system player at Duke. But the problem was exactly that. Bagley was a system player. He could be useful in quality teams as a finisher, a slasher, and a player who pushes the ball in transition. But he wasn't a guy who would make a difference on his own. The Kings got an all-rounder, a player who had the potential to be a second or third option on a championship team, which is great because you need players like that. But in this draft, stacked with superstar difference makers, the Kings wasted their pick. And that's something that can't be said for the Atlanta Hawks, who had the third overall pick. The Hawks drafted Doncic. The Atlanta Hawks select Luka Doncic from Ljubljana, Slovenia. But they immediately traded him to Dallas for Trey Young, plus the Mavericks' first pick in 2019, which proved to be one of the most win-win trades in NBA history. While Doncic was clearly the best player in the draft, Trey Young was not far off, with passing ability and shooting prowess that jumped off the page. At number four, the Grizzlies drafted Jaron Jackson Jr., the shot-blocking machine who could shoot and move like a guard. Because they still had Mike Conley in his prime, Memphis's pick was logical, and in retrospect, they can't be mad at drafting Jackson Jr. Dallas then drafted Trey Young for Atlanta, and Orlando drafted Mo Bamba at number six, the seven-foot center from Harlem with such a big wingspan that he can close the doors on both sides of a limo while sitting in the back seat without moving. Along with his height and nearly eight-foot wingspan that broke the record at the NBA Combine, Bamba was extremely mobile and jumpy, not only in the open court, but also laterally, which is why he is quick to get back into position, either when defending the post or as a help defender. Bamba was considered the best defensive prospect in the draft, and he famously said that the Mavs would regret not drafting him at number five. However, despite all those highly regarded prospects, there were gems in this draft still sitting in the green room, waiting for their name to be called. The biggest name still on the board was Michael Porter Jr., who was ranked the number one player in the country as a senior and was considered the most talented player in the draft. MPJ's jump shot is pure poetry in motion, and he could pull up from anywhere. And since he didn't miss from mid-range, 
range, and because he's 6 foot 10, everybody compared him to Kevin Durant. Uber efficient, athletic, Porter Jr. would likely be the number one pick if he didn't injure his lower back, which forced him to miss all but three games in college. Eventually, MPJ slid down to the 14th overall pick. The Denver Nuggets select Michael Porter Jr. from the University of Missouri. However, there were a few guys drafted ahead of him who proved to be great steals in this draft. At number 10, Philadelphia drafted Mikal Bridges. Then, they stupidly traded him to Phoenix for Zaire Smith. Smith is probably the biggest disappointment in the draft, playing just 13 games total, while Bridges became an all-around wing who would prove to be the next NBA Ironman, never missing a single game since he got drafted. And at pick number 11, there was a player who was never highly recruited, who had an old-school game that wasn't flashy but who should have been picked second overall behind Luka. We're talking about Shea Gilgis-Alexander, who was drafted by the Clippers, even though he would soon get traded to Oklahoma City for Paul George. But the biggest steal of the draft fell all the way down to the second round, and that's Jalen Brunson, who was picked 33rd overall by the Mavericks, even though he was the best player on a Villanova team that won two NCAA titles. But because of Brunson's small stature at 6'2", and the belief that he wouldn't be anything more than a sister point guard, he got passed on by every team in the draft. And if there were a redraft, Luka would be the number one overall pick, Shea would go second, and it's a toss-up between Brunson and Trey Young for the number three spot. Jaron Jackson would probably be the fifth pick, followed by Mikal Bridges and Michael Porter Jr. And to close out the top ten, Aiton would likely go at eight, Colin Sexton at number nine, and Miles Bridges as the tenth overall pick. Wendell Carter Jr., Gary Trent Jr., Anthony Simons, and Kevin Herter would also be lottery picks in a redraft which proves the depth of this class. Doncic, SGA, Trey, and Brunson all made the All-Star and All-NBA team so far, with plenty more to come. And because in this draft was also Colin Sexton, the eighth overall pick who's averaging 19 points per game in his career, and Anthony Simons selected 24th, who averaged over 20 points in his last three years as a starter, it's easy to see why this crop can be considered the class of the point guard. When you add Aaron Holiday and Javon Carter, both serviceable point guards who will have long NBA careers, there's never been a draft as rich at the point guard position as this one. However, it's not only the point guards who are playing well. Jaron Jackson won Defensive Player of the Year, he was an All-Star, and has led the NBA in blocks. Considering that he's still only 25 years old, it's reasonable to think that he'll only get better, and maybe get one or two more Defensive Player of the Year awards. And because Jackson is also a scorer, who averaged 22 points per game in 2024, it's not a completely wild take for him to eventually make the Hall of Fame. Multiple Defensive Player of the Year winners like Dikembe Mutombo and Ben Wallace made the Hall, and they weren't half the offensive threat that Jaron Jackson is. Luka is basically already a Hall of Famer based on his European resume and five All-NBA first-team selections. When you add Shea, who is another perennial All-NBA player and potential MVP, Trey Young, who's averaging 25 and 10 for his career, and Brunson, who's on his way to becoming a Knicks legend, this class potentially has five future Hall of Famers, which is one of the best results ever. The average NBA draft class has two Hall of Famers, and even the best ever drafts, like the 84, 96, and 2003 drafts previously mentioned, still only have four players that entered or will enter the Hall in Springfield. But even if all five stars from the 2018 draft don't all make the Hall of Fame, the 2018 class is still one of the deepest ever. From 1984 to 2014, an average of 19 players per draft averaged a 10-year career in the NBA. The average length of an NBA career is just 4.5 years, and if a player survives in the league for more than a decade, that's actually a rarity and not the norm. For example, the 1998 NBA draft had only five All-Stars, but 25 players who played a decade in the league, which is one of the best results ever. In 2003, 27 players played for 10 or more years, which is the most ever, with one of those players players still going strong in year 22. But from the 2018 class, there are a whopping 37 players who are still in the league, and it's safe to say that most of them will last for four more years in the league. Even if only 75% of those 37 make it to year 10, it's still going to be 27 players who survived in the NBA for a decade, which will tie the 2003 class for the most players ever. But it's not only the amount of years that separates the 2018 class from the rest, it's also the impact. And we're not talking about Luka and the other four All-Stars, but role players, of which there are plenty.
The 1970 NBA draft, which had 12 All-Stars, the most in NBA history, only had 13 players that averaged 10 points or more in their careers. The 1984 draft, with four Hall of Famers and three MVPs, had 14 players to average over 10 points. The 1996 draft had only 11, the same as LeBron's 2003 class. But in 2018, there are currently 18 players averaging more than 10 points per game. Of course, their careers aren't over yet, and those averages can drop as production dwindles down towards their retirement. However, even those players who aren't averaging 10 points per game already had a significant impact and are known NBA names, like Bruce Brown, Mitchell Robinson, Robert Williams, DeAnthony Melton, Jared Vanderbilt, Mo Wagner, and Landry Shamit. What is also special about this draft is that it didn't have any big busts. Sure, Aiton wasn't supposed to be the number one pick, but he still averages 16 and 10, and was the third best player on a team that made the NBA Finals. Marvin Bagley is also a disappointment, but he's averaging 13 points per game in just 24 minutes of action and still has a chance to grow and get better. Out of 14 lottery picks, only Jerome Robinson, Kevin Knox, and Mo Bamba can qualify as busts, even though Bamba will likely still have a long career based on his defensive production, as there will always be a team that needs a mobile seven-footer with a pterodactyl wingspan. The 2018 draft won't have 10 all-stars like the 1996 class, and it likely won't have three different MVPs like the 1984 draft, which also had a total of 47 All-NBA selections. But with five potential Hall of Famers and a plethora of great starters and role players, the 2018 draft might become one of the deepest draft classes of all time. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, we've got another one for you right here.